Welcome into Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic Mondays wherever you may be across this great country or this great land. We got a lot of good news coming in on the coronavirus front. I'm going to go ahead and dive into that, but we got a lot of storylines to get to. Dak and Zeke partying down in Texas. CJ2K uh, alleged to have committed a, uh, or had a double murder committed. A 25-day NBA ramp-up. What would that look like if the league comes back? Uh, Drew Brees has picked NBC over ESPN. And Joe Biden's sexual assault allegations. What is the precedent that is going to be followed? Is it going to be the Brett Kavanaugh standard? Or is it going to be a totally different standard? We will discuss. But we began with the coronavirus update. I want to say this off the top. I have never received better feedback, more positive feedback from you guys than what I have received for writing and talking about the coronavirus. Never anything like it. So I want to say thank you for all of uh, that support. Uh, it's been it's been incredibly gratifying uh, and it's come from all over the place and I appreciate it. Uh, and right now, Early on, we had to work to find a positive story associated with the coronavirus. Now, it's just all raining down upon us as it appears now that we are on the backside, that we have peaked uh, by already being in a position where we're on the downward slope of the coronavirus. New York announced uh, this morning that the number of deaths are down fairly substantially by 100 some odd deaths. Uh, since the peak appears to have occurred in New York City. Uh, There were reports that New York was going to need 140,000 hospital beds. It appears that that total is only going to end up peaking at 18,500. The naval ship that went up and parked in New York Harbor, berthed in New York Harbor, has been barely used. The Javits Center has been barely used as well. Uh, It appears, according to Andrew Cuomo's press conference this morning, that New York is through the worst of the coronavirus. And as a result, because New York has a huge percentage of the overall cases and deaths in this country, that it would appear the United States is through the the, the worst as well. A couple of stats for you. Uh, We hit a six-day low in deaths on Sunday across the nation. We have now had eight days uh, of case totals below the peak that we posted eight days ago. Uh, And spoiler alert, we are headed for a ninth straight day below the peak uh, today as well as a seventh straight day of uh, or seven day low probably in total deaths. This stat is going to blow a lot of your minds. Yesterday, yesterday the data, 38 states and the District of Columbia. 38 states and the District of Columbia had 11 deaths or lower. I want you to think about that for a minute. Yesterday in the United States, 38 states and the District of Columbia. Can you believe it? Can you even conceive of it? Had 11 or fewer deaths. Yes, New York is in rough shape. New Jersey, Connecticut as well. Also, Michigan has had a rough go of it. But I'm telling you that hardly anyone is talking about the fact that in 38 states and the District of Columbia, 11 people or fewer had in any way a, uh, a situation uh, where there were 11 deaths or more. Think about that for a minute. 11 deaths or fewer, I should say, in 38 states and the District of Columbia. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild to think about. Really the way, and I wrote a probably 6,000 words today. I would encourage you guys to go read it uh, on OutKick talking about the seven deadly sins of our coronavirus response. And it's a, it's a really detailed and fairly nuanced look at the way uh, the nation, the media, social media, everybody responded, our use of experts, I'd encourage you to go read it if you haven't already. It's up on the front page of Outkick.com but it lays out in much detail a lot of this. And so I'd encourage you to go read it, share it, 
uh, and, uh, and consume it uh, as, as much as you can. Everybody's got a lot of free time uh, right now. So that is the latest. Couple of other stats. 23 days in a row uh, in Italy since we ha- set a peak in Italy for total new cases on March 21st. 23 days below that peak. Uh, and also the low, second lowest number of deaths since March the 13th in Italy. Remember when everybody was talking about how Italy was a disaster and everything else and no one could talk about it? The other thing I would tell you is pay attention to per capita numbers. Per capita, the United States has been better than almost every European country uh, in terms of our response. People are looking at total numbers not per capita numbers. Per capita, we are a fraction of the data that's being posted in other parts of the uh, uh, other parts of the world, so uh, all of that is a uh, all of that is the background, the latest news on the coronavirus. There is a ton of positivity. The IHME model, which I believe uh, is likely still exaggerating the total number of deaths, has said that uh, that, that we are through the peak, and so we are on the backside. I think. What the big debate is going to be now is how do we bring the country back and allow this economy to start rolling again Uh, because again and I've been talking about this since the get-go we have to uh, understand that the economy also factors in in a big way to the health of this country. We can't just shut down everything for the coronavirus. We have to balance multiple competing interests And, uh, and so as a result I think that uh, that that's going to be the big question that we have as the month of April continues to play out because there is going to be and continue to be a lot of positivity uh, in our beatdown that we are now delivering of uh, the coronavirus. I also encourage you to go check out the podcast from this morning. It's fantastic. Trent Dilfer was on. Uh, We talked with Dr. Phalo who is working on the vaccine at the University of Pittsburgh and also Jason Whitlock. I encourage you all to, uh, to go check out that uh, podcast. Make sure you don't miss any of it. Uh, All right. Uh, I'm going to move outside of the coronavirus now. Uh, And well, a little bit. Did you see the Dak and uh, uh, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott story? TMZ caught them throwing a party where there appeared to be about 30 different people attending. I don't know how many of you are Cowboys fans uh, but this has gotten a lot of attention around uh, certainly uh, sports circles and beyond. Um... I'm not surprised that people are breaking the quarantine. I think there are a lot of people doing it particularly if you are younger uh, and don't feel like you are in danger from uh, the coronavirus. Uh, But this is I think emblematic of not only uh, the fact that it's probably a risky move to undertake when you're a public figure like this but also how in the world did people decide to post on it about it on social media? It's pretty crazy to me that if you decide to have a party like that which, right, you shouldn't be doing if you're following these social distancing guidelines but everybody goes in and decides to post about it on social media as well which is how everybody ended up finding out about it. If you had just brought in everybody it wouldn't have turned into a big story. Instead, it's a massive uh, story right now and a lot of people are ripping Dak and Ezekiel Elliott. Um, I do think it's strange in general in the land of the free that we are using police officers to go uh, show up when people are gathering in large groups and threaten to arrest them and all of these uh, aspects. I saw a video that went viral of Philadelphia. I believe it was police yanking a guy off of public transportation because he wasn't wearing a mask. And I'm just taking a step back saying wait a minute. If your concern is the spread of the virus why do you want to put your hands on this guy? Everybody should listen to police in the first place but I don't know that the best way to stop the spread of the virus is by dragging people off of public transportation like the video uh, that I saw on uh, social media. I think we need to rapidly move towards opening back up uh, the community and there are so many interesting things to discuss about this but I think that Dak and Zeke actually found themselves in an interesting cross current of uh, situations. And uh, again, uh, I, I, I find it really a bit wild the rules that are in play here. 
Everybody in a community can go to a grocery store, the same grocery store. Everybody in a community can go to the same Walmart, but we're not allowed to go anywhere else. Isn't that the exact opposite of social distancing to have everybody go to the exact same places? Um, And I think, again, this is going to be a massive uh, issue to unpack in the future. But a lot of the essential business designations don't make sense to me. I'll give you an example. Someone delivered cupcakes to my house for my birthday. I appreciate the cupcakes being sent to me. But how in the world is a local cupcake business essential? I'm just asking the question. I know they produce food. But if I were a lawyer and I were filing a lawsuit if you had to argue with me whether a business is essential or not cupcakes? Not a bakery. A cupcake specific business is essential? Really? And there's tons of other places that are being forced to shut down? Like I can't go get my hair cut but cupcakes can be delivered to my house? That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and I think there are a lot of you out there that as you look at the list of essential businesses you're like, well, this dividing line really doesn't make sense. I'm sure cupcakes are getting in under the exception that exists for food but are there very many people who are otherwise unable to eat that are only eating cupcakes? Again, they were delivered to me on my birthday. I was glad I was glad to get cupcakes. I'm not complaining about it. But I was stunned beyond belief when the doorbell rang at my house and I went and opened the door that somebody was standing there from the cupcake place delivering cupcakes to my house. If I were trying to determine whether or not cupcakes are essential I'd probably go on the non-essential side. So I, I don't really understand it at all. Similarly, my lawn guys can show up and work. I'm glad for it. Everybody in my neighborhood who's building houses everybody is showing up and building the houses. I don't understand how the distinction is made. You can as a real estate agent still go show houses but I can't go work out in a private gym. Again, the line seems to me really strange the way it is defined. I can get a pool put in my backyard right now. The building of a pool is considered an essential service. They can show up the whole crew they can dig a hole in my backyard they can put a pool in but I can't go to my gym. Does that make sense to anybody out there? There are a lot of flaws it seems to me in what is essential and what is not essential and ultimately we just need to get back to work. But that was all spiraling out of Dak and Zeke. CJ2K Did you guys see this story? Chris Johnson Chris Johnson is accused of having two people murdered based on being shot back in 2015. I'm stunned this story isn't getting more attention. TMZ reports Chris Johnson shot in the shoulder back in 2015 and now CJ2K ran for 2,000 yards with the Tennessee Titans they are reportedly investigating him for double murder. This would put him in the same category if he were charged with Ray Carruth, Aaron Hernandez, OJ Simpson, and Ray Lewis. Uh, Not a lot of guys in the NFL who've been charged with murder to say nothing of double murder. This is a story worth paying attention. In case you're wondering, CJ2K says not true. All right. In case you were wondering, you were like, man, Chris Johnson has been accused of double murder. I wonder what he said in response to the double murder. He said it's fake news. Fake news. That's a, that's a, you get accused of double murder and your response is to go on social media and say fake news. Uh, that is funny in and of itself on some level. Uh, but I'm surprised it hasn't gotten more attention uh, so far uh, as we break it down. Drew Brees. If you read OutKick you remember that I reported that ESPN had made a big offer to Drew Brees to be their next Monday Night Football analyst when he decided to retire. Over the weekend the New York Post reported that Drew Brees turned down ESPN and decided instead to go out there and to uh, and to um, go to NBC. 
So Drew Brees, when he retires, is going to go to NBC. This means that ESPN has now whiffed on Tony Romo, Peyton Manning, and Drew Brees. And so they're going to have to figure out who the next voice of Monday Night Football is uh, having whiffed again on Romo, Peyton Manning, and Drew Brees. Big addition based on what a lot of people tell me with Drew Brees going to NBC. Uh, Finally, this is to me really intriguing. Joe Biden has been accused of sexual assault by a woman who worked on his, uh, in his Senate office back, I believe it is in 1993. The New York Times wrote about it, this allegation. They buried it as the final news story of the newspaper. Yes, I still read the old school newspaper. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal I get delivered to my house every day and I sit there like an old man and flip through both. I still read both. The reason why I get both is I want two different perspectives. I want the business conservative perspective And I also want the liberal social perspective so I can see how American news is covering many of the same stories. I try to read them aggressively. I try to find out what I believe by getting a variety of perspectives. Uh, And so what's interesting here is Joe Biden bought into the Brett Kavanaugh standard. And the Brett Kavanaugh standard is essentially this hashtag believe all women. If a woman accuses a man of sexual assault it doesn't matter what evidence is out there. You have to believe her. Well, wildly Democrats are silent about this Joe Biden accusation as is most of the media that has often carried the Democrats' water on stories such as these. Joe Biden is accused of sexually assaulting a woman who worked in his office i.e. she was his employee when he was an adult There is multiple corroborating evidence to support the fact that this woman told other people around the same time as well as people over the decades since about this sexual assault. Compare that with Brett Kavanaugh where there was zero corroborating evidence where there was no employer-employee relationship where in fact the people involved were minors and it was alleged to have happened at a house party. There is no suggestion that Brett Kavanaugh according to his own recollections even knew this woman Christine Blasey Ford yet every Democrat on the House on the Senate Judiciary Committee as well as almost all Democrats in the Senate believed her on face value and chose to vote against Brett Kavanaugh because of her allegations. Yet now they are going to have absolutely nothing to say about Joe Biden who was accused of sexual assault against an employee when he was her employer a woman that he 100% knew and she 100% knew him and that he was an adult at the time of this alleged incident unlike Brett Kavanaugh being in high school. If you compare these two situations and allegations the allegations against Joe Biden are far and away much more believable and supportable by all of the evidence in this case than the evidence was against Brett Kavanaugh. Yet many left-wingers are giving Joe Biden a pass including Bernie Sanders who endorsed him today while they were willing to believe a woman with no corroborating evidence whatsoever against Brett Kavanaugh. How do you distinguish those two situations? Now, People say, what do you think? I am a don't believe anybody based on their race, gender, ethnicity, religion, or sexuality. Look at all the evidence in play and decide what is more likely than not when you determine whether or not you believe evidence. I told you that I don't particularly agree with lots of things that Brett Kavanaugh might do as a Supreme Court Justice but that I believe the standard regardless of Democrat or Republican should be the same. Here Democrats are clearly coming up with an entirely different standard to justify Joe Biden and why they don't believe this woman and among the reasons they don't believe this woman are the same things that they ripped Brett Kavanaugh to the high heavens for saying. Other women come out and say I don't believe Joe Biden would do this he never treated me like this. Uh, Other uh, individuals call in to question the motivation based on politics 
of the woman who is making the allegation and the length of time ago under which this happened is all being cited as evidence in favor of Joe Biden. When the same thing happened for Brett Kavanaugh it was called victim blaming and classified as shameful. When Brett Kavanaugh said hey this happened when I was a high school kid people said it doesn't matter. When Brett Kavanaugh said every woman I've ever worked with including people that I went to high school with and college none of them have anything bad to say about me. They said it doesn't matter. Just because you're nice to those women doesn't mean you might not have been mean and sexually assaulted another woman. And when the lack of evidence was brought up it was described as insulting to the woman that you didn't believe her. All of these things are happening with Joe Biden except that the allegations against him are much more sound and it's crickets. Again, I don't mind the standard that you apply. I think the standard that should be applied is the one that I applied which is we don't believe anybody based on their race, gender, ethnicity or religion or sexuality or anything else. We have to actually look at the evidence. Believing all men or all women is stupid. It isn't actually justice and many of the Democrats on that Judiciary Committee knew it because they're lawyers. And they're giving Joe Biden a pass but they wouldn't give Brett Kavanaugh a pass. Having inconsistent precedents to me is something that is a tremendous flaw of our current political system. And also our media. This is wild. Okay? This is absolutely wild. The New York Times buried this allegation at the very back of their uh, opening uh, page 20 and 21 of their newspaper. When you turn the page all right, the last story in the newspaper when you turn the page and get to the editorial section the next page after the sexual assault allegation do you know who is the lead editorial in the New York Times today? Joe Biden! The New York Times literally wrote a sexual assault allegation story against Joe Biden buried it at the back of the newspaper the literal last two pages of the news you turn the page to the editorial and opinion page of the New York Times and the primary editorial that is up to be seen by everyone turning the page is from Joe Biden about how he would respond to the coronavirus crisis. Now I know editorial and news are supposed to be separate but nobody at the New York Times thought hey maybe we shouldn't give the lead editorial on the Monday edition of our newspaper to the same guy we just spent thousands of words investigating a sexual assault claim against. Nobody thought hey might seem a bit incongruous if you read about Joe Biden's sexual assault allegations which we're trying to cover up and then the next page is literally an editorial from Joe Biden about how he would respond to the coronavirus. There is no way that you can possibly argue that is anything other than an inherent inherent direct bias on behalf of the New York Times and their newspaper. And again the lack of consistency in the standard for Brett Kavanaugh and Joe Biden is glaring, it's hypocritical, it is outrageous and yet very few people in media will point it out. People get mad at me because I try to keep precedence. Try to make rules and follow them. That's what good judges do. That's what smart people should do. That's what you should do if you're in media or you're just a regular person out there. All right. I love all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. If you enjoy the show you can go download the audio version of the podcast. You can share it with your friends. Thanks for making March the most listened to and watched month in the history of the program. I think April is going to set a new record as well. I love all of you. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. I will see you guys tomorrow. Live on the radio 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern all over the nation. Sirius XM channel 83. 50 different states 300 plus different AM and FM affiliates and then I'll be on with you guys here in the afternoon. Go read the big article I put up at OutKick. You'll guaranteed to like it. Uh, Love all of you. This has been OutKick the show. DBAP unless you need to ask BAP. See y'all. Love you. Thank you Facebook. See y'all.